What you guys got another video? This mini PC is perfect for a home server for beginners. If you're looking to set up your home server, maybe to share some files with Nextcloud or maybe Home Assistant, or you want to set up a Plex server or something like that, then using something like this B-Link is very cheap and affordable, but you can use any mini PC that you like. Now, before we get into this, let's have a quick word from today's video sponsor, CD Key Sales. If you're looking for a cheap Windows 10 Pro or a cheap Windows 11 Pro OEM key, set up your account on CD Key Sales. Use my promo code capital B capital R 09. Apply that to your order. Submit your order. They will then send you your key and you will then be able to activate your version of Windows just like you see on the screen right now. It's simple and easy to do. Anyway, let's get back to the tutorial. First off, what we're going to be doing is downloading Ubuntu server. We're going to be using Ubuntu 24.04 LTS, and we're going to be downloading this, and then we're going to create a bootable USB flash drive first so we can install Ubuntu server onto our mini PC. Now, depending on what mini PC you've got will determine what type of specs you've got and how much storage you've got. They're all different, but this is a pretty budget low end uh, mini PC, but it's going to be great for our home server that we're going to be using to try and get used to uh, doing this type of stuff. So first off, we're going to need to download Belina Etcher. And basically, once we get this down, we can point to our file, which is our Linux server right here. Select this and click open and now we need to select our usb flash drive i've already got mine plugged into the computer this is it right here i'm going to select that and now all we need to do is click on flash and this will go ahead and flash that usb flash drive with ubuntu server now i know exactly what you're thinking this is going to be really difficult to set up because i'm not familiar with linux or any type of commands or anything like that. Don't worry, it's really simple and easy to do and I'll show you step by step. First off, what you need to do is change the boot order inside your mini PC to boot to that Ubuntu USB flash drive. Once we've done that, we can click save and exit and this will then boot to our USB flash drive. Change the language to your liking and change the keyboard layout to your liking as well. I'm going English UK here. And once we've done this, we will then move on to the next step. So let's go on to the next step. Here, I'm going to install Ubuntu server. You can install uh, basically the Ubuntu minimalized server if you want to, but I'm going to go for the full-blown Ubuntu server. Now I'm going to use the arrow keys to navigate down to additional options here and search for third-party drivers. And uh, if you push, push the wrong button, it's going to go back just like this. Make sure you're on done and it will move on. OK, if you're going through this navigation with your keyboard, that's what I'm doing here using the arrow keys on the keyboard. And then you can use the space bar to basically uh, select what you want. So I've navigated down to the additional options here and then I'm going to push the space bar to select that option. So let's go down here. And you can see it navigating down. You could use your tab key as well. That's quite useful when you're using your keyboard. But let's go ahead and push the space bar. And now you'll see the cross going into additional options. Now go down to the bottom of the screen and you will see uh, the done section. So this will move us on to the next section. So let's go ahead and do that. Now here you can see it's selecting my uh, Ethernet adapter here for connecting to the Internet. You can see it's giving us an IP address right there. That's fine. And now we can go ahead and push next and move on to the next screen. Now we've got the proxy address here. You can push enter here and it will find a mirror uh, for us. So let's go ahead and do that. You will see the mirror location is uh, being tested and you can see it's found a bunch of stuff down there. We can now click next and move on to the next screen. It's pretty simple stuff, isn't it? Once you uh, take your time and installed it. It's not as difficult as people make out. You just have to read what's on the screen and follow the instructions and it's pretty straightforward. So let's move on to the next screen and we will now use the entire disk of our machine. I've put the cross in there and now I'm going to change the drive. Make sure you're changing the drive here. You can see there is a little drop down here and I want to change it from the internal two terabyte drive I have in there to an actual internal NVMe drive. So I'm going to change this to install Ubuntu onto our internal NVMe. 
because I did put another SSD inside that machine. Once we've done that, push next. And there we can see our summary of information here. What we need to do now is push next again. And this will then go and prepare and do this for us. So all we need to do now is create our account. We can go ahead and give it a name. You can call yourself whatever you like here. This is for your name. I'm just going to put Brian here. And now we can put in the server name. So you can use whatever server name you like. I'm just going to call this B-Link so I know exactly what it's like and what it reads like on the network so I can see it. And now we can do pick a username. So I'm just going to say Brightech here. And now we can choose a password. So choose a nice strong password. And we're going to go ahead and put that in here. And we need to confirm our password. And once we've done this, we can then move on to the next screen. So remember where we are right now. We've created our user profile for this account. So let's go ahead and push next. You can skip this step. This is to enable Ubuntu Pro. We're not interested in that right now. And now we can enable and install OpenSSH server. We do need to do this because we want to be able to get to our server from our machine. We don't want to be using a keyboard and mouse on the server. We can unplug all that once we're finished. So now we're going to have the option to choose whether we want to install any of this stuff like Docker or any other item you see on here like Nextcloud and other things like that. I'm going to leave this for now because I want to show you how to do this in case you just want to install just the pure uh, Ubuntu server. And we can do this via tutorials that you'll find online, which will put all of the codes that you just copy and paste. And once you've done that, you're pretty much good to go. So we'll let that install. It's going to do some updates. Let it do the update. It's important that you let it finish off before you reboot. It will say cancel update and reboot. We're not going to do that. We're going to let it reboot. Now we've rebooted the system and this is what we're seeing right here. It looks pretty daunting, but don't worry. We are now set up and what we can do, we can access this shortly from our computer and we can unplug the monitor and unplug the keyboard and mouse because we don't need to use that. We can leave this sitting in a corner somewhere near our router and we should be pretty much good to go. We can access it from the computer because that's how we're setting this up. So first off, if you want to find your IP address for this and you've forgotten it, you can do a simple command, which is IP space A, and this will give you all of the IPs on that particular system. You can see here it will give you the IP and it will give you all the inf information for the Ethernet that you're using or the adapter you're using here. You can see them listed out here. So just take note of that right there. And then once you've got this, you can then connect to it. Now, before I go to the machine and log on to it, I want to do a quick update and you can do sudo apt update and sudo apt upgrade. And you can do these commands and type them out and push enter. And this will go ahead and start to do updates on that system. You will be asked to put your password in. So put the password in you set up for your server and this will then go off and do the updates and upgrades. You need to do those two commands that I'm showing you up on the right hand side and this will fully update and upgrade your server to make sure it's fully updated you'll see a bunch of code going up on the screen here don't worry about that that's normal but once you've done this you should be pretty much good to go now what we're going to be doing next is you're not going to be wanting to work inside this command prompt uh, type window all the time so we're going to be setting up docker and also Portainer on here so you can add in some stuff and you'll have a GUI interface to work with, which is going to be a lot easier for you. So, so far, all you've done is done a few commands and we're here. So let's go ahead and now log in. You can see the B-Link login. That's the mini PC that we're now logging into. And we can go over to our computer and now log into our server. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to open up a terminal window on our Windows system here. And this will bring up this little window here. And now we can type SSH and then your username and then at and the IP address of your server. This will then say, are you sure you want to continue connecting? We're going to say yes, type yes. And this will allow us to connect to our server that we've just set up. It's going to ask you for your password. So put in your password here 
And once we've got that, you should now see that we are now logged in. So let's go ahead and install Docker on this uh, Ubuntu server. Now, there is a document here you can easily follow. And all you need to do is scroll down here. I'll leave this in the video description for you. And we're looking for the installation method so you can choose which way you want to do it. And it's pretty simple. It's not that difficult once you follow along. It's very easy once you know where to look. So you can see here installation methods and it will give you some installation methods that you can use. And it all looks a little bit daunting, but don't worry. I'll show you how easy it is to get this up and running. And then we can put Portainer on here, which will give us that GUI interface. So here we have uh, some commands here that we can use. We can preview the steps before we're running them by using the dry run here. And these are them right here. And these are on that document. So you can highlight one of these and copy it. You can either use a little copy thing there or right click and copy, whatever suits you. Paste this in, push enter, and this will download uh, the script that is needed. If we type ls, you can see the script right there that it's going to use. And we can now go back to the site and get the second command. Now this is a dry run command, which is going to basically show us what that script's going to do. So we can push enter here and we need to put in our password here because we've got the sudo command here. So just put our password in and right here, you will now see what this script is actually going to do. And it tells you it's going to install a bunch of stuff and it's going to do a bunch of other things on here. I'm not going to read all the way through this. You can read it yourself, but it is pretty straightforward and it shows you what it's going to do. It's going to get some updates and stuff like that. So let's go ahead and take out, we're going to paste that command back in and take out the dry run. So now this will go ahead and install everything that we've just done here. So now we're actually installing Docker onto our server. So just two commands and we've got Docker installed on this mini uh, server that we've just set up. So just let that finish. It might take a bit of time. And once that's done, you can see you will have something looking like this. So let's go ahead and you can read this information. If you want to run Docker as a non-privileged user, consider setting it up uh, with this and it will show you a document there that you can go to and it will teach you how to set that up. We're just going to leave it as is right now. And what we're going to do next is we're going to go back uh, to that website. So you need to read all this information if you want to set this up, as I've said, as a non-privileged user. But we'll just leave it with fully privileged at the moment. I wouldn't advise doing that in the long run, but we're just going to leave it like that for now. So now we can verify and make sure the service uh, for the Docker is started by using this command. And now we can do this command here, which will say hello world. And it will tell us that it's uh, set working properly. Now let's install Portainer on here. And we can click on this by saying set up a new Portainer CE server addition so let's go ahead and do that docker standalone is what we're going to click on and we're going to install portainer ce with docker on linux because that's what we're using here so let's click on this and now we can scroll down and it will give us the code that we need to use to install it this is the information for deployment right here docker volume create portainer and you can see here it's going to do a bunch of different stuff which is uh, the port that we're going to be using for Portainer as well. So let's go ahead and do these commands right here. We need to put the sudo command in front of it and then do the volume create Portainer underscore data. It's important that you put the sudo command in front, otherwise it's not going to work. You'll get an error. So copy this out here. This is telling us what port, port we're going to use, which is port 9443, and that's what it's going to be using here, and we need to connect to it once we've done this. So let me copy this whole path of code here go back here type sudo and what we need to do here space and then paste that command in so we've got 9443 is the port that we're using and we need to put in our ip address in front of that to connect to portainer okay it's that simple and now we're going to be at a gui interface so it's going to be easier to use so there's our port and now we can scroll back on that actual window here and get your IP address that you use to access the server in the first place. So just keep those two in mind, your server IP and your port that we're going to be using. And here is our server IP right here. So that's what we need to do. So now let's go to 
a browser window now because we can now use a browser window and you can do HTTPS uh, colon forward slash forward slash your IP address for the server and then colon and that 9443 and you will get your connection is not private. We're going to connect to it anyway and there we have Portana uh, right here on the uh, browser here. So all we need to do here now is create an account for Portana so you can use whatever information you want for your username and your password. And there is a little time delay here. So if you don't do this quickly, it's going to time out and you'll need to restart the Portana server. So you need to make sure you're using a password that is 12 characters. If you don't, it won't allow you to continue. And sometimes if you take your time here, because I've been talking and messing around, when I click on create a user, you may get the new Portana installation has timed out. Now you need to do this command, which is sudo docker. Uh, restart Portana and then we can go back and create our Portana setup again. So I'm going to refresh again and we're going to have to go through this quickly. So let me quickly do this. I'm going to put Brightech here and then put in a 12 character password here and then we can create a user uh, for this Portana. Very simple and you'll see what it looks like once it's done. So I'm going to remove that check there, click create a user and there we are. We're at this window right here. We can get started with Portana. And basically, there we are. We've got our GUI up and running. And now we can control everything from here. We don't need to go into that command line anymore here. And it just gives us a, a information about what we've got here. So let's go to local here. And you can see there is our networks. We've got our containers, our volume, and our images. And if we click on containers here, you'll see that we are running Portana right here. And we can see there is a wonderful underscore uh, Driscoll, and it is basically called Hello World. You can delete these because we're not using them. That's because we typed it into that command prompt to test it. But all you need to do here is click remove, and you can put the slider on to always remove non persistent volumes if you want to and just click remove and it will remove them from here and now we're just running Portana on here and that's basically how we've got this set up so far and you can do the same thing with the images if you click on images here on here we've got the dashboard we can go to images here and volumes and you'll see all the information that we just set up Portana underscore data is what we use for that command and now we've got images here and you might see another one saying hello world here and we can remove this as well it says it's unused and we're not using it so put the check mark in and just click on remove it's that simple and you can see it right here now you can obviously just remove this like that and it's now gone and now we're set up so now you can install whatever you like in Portana onto your little mini PC and we've got this set up so whether you want to install Plex or whether you want to put a home assistant or maybe you want to set up a website for yourself from here running it from here you can do plex is very simple a few commands uh set up and set it, it gives you all the information on the tutorials on their website and again if you mess it up you can start again it's not that difficult just delete the container and start all over again it's really simple and it's a good way for beginners to learn how to set up their own home server here so here's the usage right here just have a look at the information. If you want to set up a pie hole, you can do. And there's also steps guide here to help you set this up as well. I'm not going to go through any more in this tutorial because it is getting a bit lengthy and it might be a bit too confusing. If you want to set up Home Assistant, you can do as well. There's tutorials everywhere on the internet to show you how to do this in Portana as well. Very simple and easy to do. You just follow the guide. There's plenty of people out there that have done YouTube videos and also other things as well to get you up and running. So that is pretty much it. That is basically how you can set up your home server on a cheap mini PC. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Just want to say a quick shout out to all my YouTube members. I really do appreciate the support and I'll catch you in the very next video. Bye for now.